Hallelujah. There is a place called the blessing. There are people that are licensed to open the place called the blessing. When a David is stuck in the wilderness, all he needs is a Samuel that comes with the oil of God. He may have a great destiny. He may have a great anointing. He may be killing lions and bears and writing songs, the Lord is my shepherd. But he may never find significance until one that comes with the word of the Lord lays his hands upon him and licenses him to operate in life and in his destiny. There are many people with great potentials. There are many people with great aspirations. They only lack the voice of authorization. There are many people with great dreams. There are many people with great abilities and talents. And those talents go to waste because they lack somebody who can prophetically release them. Elisha, you will forever be a farmer. Even though there is a prophetic destiny for you to be an advisor to kings, but until you come in contact with an Elijah, you will forever be using your oxen to be plowing and you may be rich from plowing, but you will never be fulfilled because you are not in your prophetic destiny. I am yet to see a man in this life. I hope those guys are praying for me. Are they praying? Are they praying? Are you sure? How do you know they are praying? You, you are this side. How do you know they are praying? They, I'm yet to see a man who becomes great and has not had an encounter with a true prophet of God. It is the prophets of God that holds the keys. The keys to cities, the keys to nations, the keys to industries, the keys to various doors of life. And so when a prophet comes, the, prophet of, the prophets of old were different to the prophets of the now in that they did not pass the churches. And that was for a reason so that when they appear, they appear by special assignments. So the moment you see a prophet, you know there is a word from God. Pastoring of churches has made people to take the prophets for granted. For he is preaching on the 29th of August, 2021. And already in your mind, next week Sunday, which is the fifth, we're going to see our spiritual father, again. On Wednesday, we're going to see him again. So they appeared by special assignments. And the moment a prophet enters your yard, you know that God has spoken. So when Isaiah entered Nehemiah's yard, Nehemiah knew the Lord is speaking and they were brutal. They could speak a word of blessing or they are bringing a word of death. For the prophet holds the key to life and to death. So when the prophet Samuel entered the city, on that day when the Lord ministered to him, I want you to go and anoint a king for myself. The prophet said, Lord, I cannot do that for the king is Saul right now. If I enter that place, people's ears are going to open up to want to know what is happening. Their eyes will open up to want to see why am I here? How can I anoint another king when there is one? There is no inauguration of a president when another one is still a president. So the prophet had a challenge with going to the house of Jesse.
If all you operate by in this life is talent, skill, personal drive and passion, you can be good for a moment. Sir, there is nobody who is a success and when they give you their success keys and they don't include their spirituality, they have not completed it. From Steve Jobs to Elon Musk, they have spirituality. Anybody that you see being something, there is a school of the prophets or the school of spirituality they belong to. It may not necessarily be of God, but they belong somewhere. One of my spiritual mentors was in one of those, I think it was China or something. And, no, he wasn't there. One of his sons went there to do business. As they got there, the business partner said, let me take you around the city to show you some various places. So they showed some various places and all of that. And finally, they were in a temple. As they got to that temple, he said, oh, this is my priest. This is my priest. Greet. They, he greeted. After greeting, that man now, the priest looked at this spiritual son of his and said, ha, ah, this man you came with, is a man that has fortunes on his forehead. You can do business with him. He will bring you a lot of good luck. So he comes back from that trip. And he's scared because they went to a priest. It's not like in the bush like Africa. It's just those Buddhists and all of that. So stop thinking of Hamra he goes back to this, my mentor, and says, this is what happened. And that man of God said to him, my mentor said, this person wanted to do business with you, but wanted to scale you in the spirit first. It is unfortunate that the power of believers, they don't use. If all I am to you is a preacher, you have abused me. If all I am to you is a pastor, a counselor, you have abused me. There is no major testimony in the scriptures without an encounter with the prophets. Sir, life is about ranks. Life is about ranks. Even when you go to the bank, there are people that when you get to the bank, they queue up. Others don't. They just enter one office there. There are others who make a call and things happen. By virtue of our president's rank and who he is, he doesn't wait in a, in a, in a, in a, in a traffic. In fact, when his car is kilometers away, the security officers are clearing. It's not when he arrives. It's not when he arrives, they say, ah, ah, the, the traffic is too long. Hey, people move, 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 move. No. But there was a time the same president, when he wasn't a president, we were in the same queue. Yeah. There was a time we were together at the airport awaiting a flight. But today, if he decides I'm leaving at 11, even if their flights arrive, and they'll be told, just fly in the air for some time. There is somebody who has to move. I watched the documentary about Air Force One. Is it called Air Force One? The American one. That if the president is leaving, flight can be behind by close to five, six hours. Because that thing is massive. And for security purposes, all flights will be delayed. That no. Nope, you can't be lending. For so many minutes or hours, nobody must be lent to clear off. To clear off. Many assume life is about the books they read. Oh, I've read uh, 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 Think and Grow Rich. 
Sir, you can read, think, and grow rich and not have authority in the spirit. Life is spiritual. You need those who are licensed in the spirit to go with you. Ezra chapter number 5. From verse 1 going to verse 2. When they were building, please put it up very fast. Then the prophet Haggai, then the prophet Haggai the prophet, Zechariah the son of Edom, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel. Even unto them they prophesied. Verse 2. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, and Joshua, the son of Josadek, and began to build the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. Look at this. When they began to build the house, with them were the prophets of God, helping them. With them were the prophets of God, helping them. Many are helpless. No matter your name, Jesus, you are Jesus, born of a virgin, it does not matter. You need John to release you. Sir, even when Jesus was to be released by John, God could not break through and say, this is my son, until John said, now we have done it. We have fulfilled our righteousness. If what you are doing is about your destiny, it cannot be done without a prophetic release. In the words of my father, Bishop, where the point he was to start ministry, God said to him, you will not go as others have gone. I will have you call my servant, E.A. Adeboye, to lay hands on you. And he gave him Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses, God's servant, had laid his hands upon him. He said, call for my servant that he may release you with the spirit of wisdom. He called for Pastor Adiboye, sent a letter. It was the days of letters, pure box, no uh, cell phones. Pastor Adiboye replied and said, I have a conference on that day. Bishop Wedepo went to God and prayed and God said, tell him the conference he has is his conference, not mine. He's supposed to ordain you on that day. Right as he wrote the letter and posted, before it arrived that side, God ministered to Pastor Adiboye. Adiboye wrote another letter. I canceled my conference. I'm coming. The letters changed on the way before they could see each other. And they did not even know each other. They met first time on the day he ordained him. Now go in, in this path by the Spirit of God. Till today, what will you do with Oyedepo? The spirit of wisdom is too strong in him. Too strong. Too strong. When Oyedepo was to enter another dimension, he had a vision of Kenneth E. Hagin of blessed memory. And God said, pattern your ministry after him. Why? Because I want you to have a noiseless yet impactful ministry. Bishop Oyedepo can be in one place for nine months three years, he doesn't go anywhere, but the impact is felt worldwide. There is no star without a prophet. Sir, don't look, there are people who are not pastors. If they are your pastors, the best they could do is to shepherd you. If they are your teachers, the best they could do is teach you. But if they are your prophets, the best they can do is to show you the way. Is to pave the way for you. With them were the prophets helping them. Do you have prophets on your side to help you? A marriage without prophets, ah, it will be like it will be like you registered for doom. It is even after having sex you fight. After this. Sir, there is a place where things seem smooth. Like, it's too good to be true. Listen, the day the enemy wants to attack you, he begins by making you doubt your prophet. When the awe towards the prophets die, that's where in the spirit you walk alone. You can still be with him. The prophet can still pray for you. What works is not the prayer of the prophet. It is the connected heart of the recipient. 
It is the connected heart. I am here to submit to you that as much as the prophetic has been bastardized in our season, people have, I mean, abused this office. It is for a reason, sir. They abused it so that you may reject it. And once you reject it, you reject the authority and the power of that office and the potentials in that office. Have we seen prophets misbehaving? Countless. Doing all manner of things. Gymnastics on the altar. Gymnastics on the altar. A lot of acting. Others not prophesying but gathering information from the people. All kinds. Sir, the enemy presents fake so that you can lose hope in the original. And you will never know when you have met the original. Maybe it's one of them. Maybe it's one of them. We live in a world of fake these days. Everything is fake. Oh, all manner of brands that every day, you will never know whether this person is wearing fake or not. Never know. Just as it is in the physical, that's how it is in the spirit. The enemy brought a lot of fake men and women of God. There was a time when a person tells you, I'm a pastor. You, you are sure they are a pastor. You can leave them in the house and say, let me go and buy bread and make you tea. And then you return, you serve tea, the pastor is there, sat nicely. This day and age, you leave him and say, let me go and buy bread here. So that uh, By the time you come back, your house is empty. The tracks were on the side. As you leave, they total everything. You can never know. Deceptive to the core. The prophets were agents of rescue. But the enemy has made them foxes. That are on ships. Yeah? Skin. Ship skin. Is that the Bible saying that? Okay. So we never know. It is when now you bring them, you think this is a sheep. They pounce. It's a fox. Ask your neighbor, is your prophet a fox? It's a fox. Fox on fire. They are foxes. All they do is to look after anything to pray on. I see this woman. She looks like she has money. Come over here, daughter. Zakata. Then look at another one. I heard. In fact, as he was parking, he saw through the window that this man is parking a nice car. Say, sir, the power of the only. There is another dimension. You must manifest destiny. If you bring what you drive, God will drive you. He will be your transporter. He will take you places. The reason why you are driving is because you still hold on to what you drive, but I see you flying. <laughs> and they ride. And they ride. The presence of the fake is the proof the genuine is available. Listen to this. I want you, my beloveds, today. I changed my sermon. You could see how I was struggling. I was changing my sermon. Listen. I don't want you to forever think you have the prophet always. Every day must be the last day with this prophet. If today was my last, which prayer would you want me to pray for you? If you will never see me today, I don't mean dying, because I'm not dying. So you are looking at me like, ah, daddy, maybe the doctor said something. You and the devil in your mind. There is no doctor. If today was the last day you met this prophet, what prayer would you want him to pray for you? If this was the last sermon, how would you listen to it? I read a book some years ago that changed my life. I can't remember the title of the book. He said, if today was your last day, I think that's the title. If today was your last day on earth, how would you live? How would you live? One of my sons in the U.S. called me the other day. And we were talking. And as we were talking, 
I said, ah, why did you call me? Among other things, he said, there was a man who changed my life some years back. I had encounters with God via him. And lately, I've been getting an impression in my heart to really check on him. I haven't, I've not spoken to him in a while. He's in another country. So, just this morning, I called to check on him. Only to hear that he had COVID and he could not survive. He said, I'm heartbroken. And God ministered to me to check on all my fathers. That every moment, at least once a month, I make a call. I ask questions. Daddy, what do you need? How are things? What do you want from me? Because this one was a wake-up moment for me. Say, I lost that one. I can never take it back again. Exactly eight years ago, today, eight years ago, we were with Dr. Miles Mann. We went, had a meeting at uh, Waze Massa. Now, it was then Lansmore Hospital. We had another meeting at GICC. We had two in the day. The late uh, Saiki Tumile Masilo, former president, was a part of the meeting. It was 2013, sir. 2014, Dr. Monroe checked out. Let me tell you something. I'll never forget that day. It was a Sunday. Finished our service, I was at home. And then, first lady had gone to sleep. As it is my custom, I sleep late. So later on, I'm going to bed. Right as I got to bed, after midnight, my spirit just woke up. I was troubled. So I jumped out of bed. I went to the living room. I sat there in the dark. Why is my heart troubled like this? Usually when that happens, I will just be praying or just read something or listen to sermons. But that day, I felt like check the internet. I did not even know what am I checking. On Facebook, I'm seeing somebody saying, Miles Monroe is no more. I call Charlie from South Africa. They were having their uh, uh, leadership conference, the annual conference in November. I call him. He doesn't pick. I send him a message. Sir, where is my father? He says, we are still dealing with something this side. I'll get back to you. I knew it has happened. My spirit could not sleep. I just woke up. In that state where I was super broken, I called my own spiritual father. I said, Daddy, my heart is not correct. I am shattered. I had so many dreams to engage in with Dr. Miles. I am shattered. I wanted to make him proud. He changed my life before I met him. He even took a gamble to come and be with us here. I am heartbroken. My father said to me, let me tell you something Miles Monroe said some few years ago. He said he had a dream. In that dream, he saw men and women of God, great men and women of God in their coffins. And they were holding a button. You know, relay the button. They were holding it in their chest, in their coffin, being buried. He said, I asked God, I said, why are they holding this button? How come they are going with the button? Shouldn't they give it to another to continue? Because their time is gone. And he said, there is nobody to give it to. There is nobody to give it to. That's how Miles Monroe wrote the book, Passing It On. From that day, Miles Monroe said, I'm not preaching in big churches. I'm preaching in places where I will be led by God to my Elishas, the ones I will release something on them before I could go. It was that time, sir. It was that time that we invited Miles Monroe. One year after he came, he passed on. Even on that day, the way he called me on the stage to pray for me, it was strange. I have never seen Miles Monroe operate under an apostolic grace like that day. 
to impart grace. Sir, after that day, my eyes opened. My ministrations changed. We received solidity in the spirit. I felt like I can do ministry. There is no great man that you cannot trace a prophet at a defining moment of their life. What if that day I said, we can't have Miles Monroe, we are a small church. Let me tell you, everything that could go wrong went wrong. <laughs> that time, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Look, half of the church left. God is my witness. You people were there. Half of our church members left. Some who left that place to give for the conference, they left with the place. I called my father one day. I said, Daddy, the people that left, they were to give. They didn't give. Should I call them and say give? My father said, focus on the project. Forget them. Half of the church membership left. Prior to meeting Miles Monroe and for him to come here 2013, 2012, I nearly got distracted because this is September I got distracted. October, I was to meet him. Listen to this. A day of encounter will have a lot of distractions. There is somebody seated here. You didn't want to come to a service. See, the problem is this. You go because it's your church. There is somebody in the second service. You wanted to go to first service. Something compelled you. Sit. You say, but I want, I'm hungry. Sit. But I, I need to use the loo. Sit. But my stomach is running. You say, it will stop. Sit. We even attend services without an expectation. Because, ah, it's my church. You know why you people get blessed more than members? Because a new person comes and says, I've never heard this kind before. An old member is sitting there with an attitude, can you finish one o'clock, it's about to hit. An old member can debate. Let's, let me tell you, never ever behave like you know a place that is spiritual. For the spirit bloweth wherever it listeth. So if you think that you know, like right now, we just made an altar call for restoration of relationships with God. It's not coming at the end. If you had come to the, at the end saying, I want to restore, we won't call it. God can do anything that is beyond your natural protocols. Before great encounters, there are great distractions. Great distractions. Great distractions. God will be telling you, sow your only car. Right as you are about to sow it, something happens that needs money. And then you say, maybe if I sell it, and then I, I take care of this thing, you have missed your destiny. I can pride myself in this thing. God leads me. Have I made mistakes in God leading me? Quite a number of them. Beyond, let me tell you, beyond God leading you, you must be a technocrat on partaking of his mercy. Sir, David was a man who knew how to enjoy mercy. David was more wrong than Saul. But David knew mercy more than Saul. Chances are, I am more wrong than you, but I'm more blessed than you. Why? Because I know mercy more than I know my doings. I want you to learn how to receive prophets. Many receive prophets like pastors. You just see me a pastor. Just see me a pastor. I've always been hungry for encounters with those who carry grace. Always been hungry. I may not be a prophet to many people, but let me tell you something. Don't let the ones I'm not sent to distract you from you that I'm sent to. I'm, I may not be sent to your mother, but I'm sent to you. 
For your mother to be telling you, you are a church too much. She means well. That's why she's not a member. Because this is too much. For you, you have the grace for it. Yeah. In that church, you give too much. You have the giving grace. In your mother's church, they give palal. And it's enough for them. Don't let your childhood friend make you to miss out on your prophet because they have your, let me tell you something someone they are not sent to they will see they will have opinion about and let me tell you something even when they talk against that person nothing wrong will happen to them because they are not sent to that person they are not sent to that person they are not sent to that person your friend can hate your husband no problem but if you hate your husband the blessings won't answer are you hearing what I'm talking about? If your friend says, I don't like your husband, no, it's your own opinion. The, your friend won't like your husband, her marriage will still continue or her life will still continue. But your, yourself, the day you stop disliking your husband, God closes the doors. Why? Because the two should become one. I am not a prophet to them and I don't want to be, but I'm sent to you. Don't act like this man is not sent to you. The proof of receiving the prophets is the investment. How do I put this? The risk investment. It's not investment, risk. Sometimes I see some of our old pictures. It gives me joy to be seeing you. That, ah, look at him back then. I see this one. Look at her back then. I see this one. Look at her back then. Ah, look at this one back then. You have invested your life. And now Jesus says to his disciples, you are they that have been with me in my troubles. The proof of followership is how you receive the trouble of the prophet. Sir, any prophet that is perfect is a proof you are not close. Say, so, ah, my father, can't imagine. When you get close, you see more. You see more. And when you see more, your behavior determines, rather your response determines the flow of the blessing. The flow. Hmm. You are they, Jesus said to them, huh? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Huh? Read it. Are, are we in the same church here? Praise Jesus. He's a mighty God. Hear this. In that our scripture of Revelation 3, it says, I have set before you an open door that no man can shut. Right? I have set before you an open door that no man can shut. Praise the Lord. I have set before you an open door. Verse 8. says, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. No man can shut it. says, for thou hast a little strength, and you have kept my word. You have not denied my name. You have not denied my name. But look at how that verse starts. What are the first words in that verse? Everybody read it. One, two, go. Once again, once again, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door. An open door is a function of works. God says, I have seen what you've been doing. Because of that, I've opened a door before you. 
that nobody can close. God had to say that no one can shut because he knows the moment he opens a door or the moment the door is open and the enemy sees you rejoicing in it, he wants to close it. He says, I have, I have programmed it that it can't be closed. It cannot be closed. But he says, I know your works. I know your works. Doors are opportunities of access, acceptance, and reception. Success in life is directly proportional to the quality and quantity of the doors that are open to you. Open doors are a function of your works. What is God seeing which you are doing that pressurizes him to open a door? That this kind, you can't do this and doors are open, or rather are closed. What did he say to Abraham? Even though Abraham was called, go to a place I will show you. He said, I will bless you through you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I will make of you a great nation in Revelation chapter number 12, rather Genesis 12 from verse 1. But later on, God said, hey, Abraham, bring me your son, your only son. As Abraham brought his son and laid him on the altar to kill him. God is too much. He will not stop while you are on the way. He will let you arrive. He will let you set the altar. He will let you put the wood. He will let you take your boy, put him on the altar, tie him, lift the knife to kill him. And that's when he will say stop. And God said, Abraham, now I know that you fear me. And then he said something that I like. He said, because we have done this thing, in blessing, I will bless you. Because you have done this thing, this thing that you have done, there is nobody who does it. It cannot, that they don't get blessed. Because you have done this thing, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Why? Because you have done this thing. There are things you do that puts a demand on heaven to open your doors. To open your doors. He says, I know your works. Uh, behold, look at this. I know your works. Behold means look intently. I know your works. And because of that, look now. I have opened a door that nobody can shut. Sir, everything you do is a build up for whatever you desire. Are you sure you are building the right momentum for the doors you want opened? Are you sure? What works have you put in place that makes God to say, in blessing, I will bless you. In Psalm 89 from verse 20, he says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. He says the sons of wickedness will not exert upon him. They will not even afflict him. He says I will beat down his foes, his enemies. Even though his children rebel against me, I will not take the scepter from David. I will punish them, but the, the kingdom will not depart from David. This is very key to stress because when Saul rebelled against God, God took the kingdom completely. But there is something David did that made God to vow, even if you rebel, I will not take the kingdom from your lineage. What are you doing that God will say, I have set an open door before you? Sir, you are, look, you can be a millionaire by tomorrow this time. Look, things can change dramatically, provided God can trust your heart. Provided God can trust your heart. I say this with all confidence. This whole month, there is no day I've not tithed. No, I mean every day. Because God taught me the power of prompt tithing. It was a Monday. I had some money and God said tithe. Immediately I tithed. Tuesday I asked Freddie, Freddie, did you record my tithe? I never asked him that. He said, I'll record it on Wednesday, sir. I said, the one of Wednesday will come on Wednesday. This one of today, record it now. I spoke it like a man under some form of influence. Sir, 
That was Tuesday. I put another one. That Wednesday, I put another one. Thursday, look right as God brings it. I give it. You know what God told me? Any money you tithe, you have already used part of it. It's no longer tithe. Tithe is the first tenth. Not the tenth. The first tenth. You are busy buying groceries, swiping, swiping, swiping. After you have swiped, 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 that's when now you go to ATM and then you say, withdraw tight. Sir, I can say with confidence because I've seen it. I've seen it. The first tenth, promptly, if God wanted you to tithe on Sunday, he will give you the money on Sunday morning. If he wanted you to tithe on Wednesday, he will give you the money on Wednesday. Why give it to you on Monday? He said, so that they may be meeting in my house. What if the meat is needed on that Monday? And now the administrators here say, we don't have the money here with us now. But the money is somewhere. And God knows that he has the money. God will not bless his institutions by his dropping things from heaven. He blesses via you. When God can trust you, you are a good vayah. Can I give you a word of prophecy here? Who is the richest African? Eh? Dangote. Eh? Dangote. He's the richest African. You won't be the richest anymore, any longer. The next richest person will be a Christian. The next richest African will be a Christian. Eh? Will be a Christian. Very soon. Dangote is Muslim. The next richest African will be will be a Christian. Maybe the same Nigeria or Ghana or whatever. But can God trust you? Can God trust you? There are things you do, God tells you that you can never backslide. Bishop Wedepo, one time, he called for an offering because they were doing a missions trip. And the people gave, but the money was not enough. So he said to God, Lord, the money is not enough. Please, we thank you for what you have given. And God said, what have you brought me, my son? Immediately he knew he's supposed to give his C-class, Mercedes-Benz. He called the wife and said, God said I should give the C-class. The wife said, if it is God, then why not? Praise the Lord. They were using the car of one of their sons going home. They left it. God is telling you, give your car. You go home with it first. To go and remove what? To go and remove the tires. Is it not here? You see, like right now, God ministered to me that I should give this young lady my tie after this. I love this tie. But uh, what will I be wearing it for? I'm just wearing it for to look presentable for the sermon. But, but imagine I'm going home with it to go and, oh, my tie, I like you. Now you are going, okay? Bishop Wedepo left the car. While he was on the way, the son is driving. The wife is next to him. None of them heard the voice. God said, my son David, even if you don't want to be rich, it's too late now. He is not blessed because he's giving. He's blessed because what he has been doing proved to God that this man, till today, the only pastor that is called the richest pastor by Forbes is Bishop Edipo. The others are self-acclaimed. No, the, Bo, Forbes has not quantified them. In fact, the statement that Forbes put when they called Bishop Edipo the richest pastor on earth, they said this is the least he is worth. He is worth much more than this. But this is the least. Others that they told you they are rich, we don't know how rich. We don't know where. Nobody has put the money together. Maybe they are miracle money or something like that. But this one, you know how Forbes will do it? Yeah. If Kanye West comes and says, I'm a billionaire, they will audit and see, are you telling the truth or not? And then they will be fighting with Kanye West. Yeah. Bishop Edipot is the richest pastor. Yeah. The other day, last week Sunday, Bishop Edipot came and said, um, for, for airtime to follow his new converts, to follow his new converts, his own, not the church. His own, the one he, the ones he won. Monthly, he uses thirty thousand billion equivalent from his pockets just to follow new converts. This year, he has won one hundred and ten thousand souls with his team, and he pays those people to follow them, and then he hired them 
to be following them. He, he for airtime on just airtime, not not for the home airtime, for airtime for it's not airtime for calling others for souls only. If God can trust that you can hire people to even win souls, hire people to ensure the souls are retained, even use the money to follow the souls, your millionaire status is your decision away. Don't bother a man's blessings if you have not seen his works. You must be blessed until people investigate you. That's what God told me beginning of this year. That you'll be blessed until you get investigated. I'm, wa I'm waiting. I'm ready. Yeah. You must be blessed until banks can't take your money. You have to put it in your safe. Yeah. Dig a hole and put in there. You're releasing it even to your children and all that. Hallelujah. So Jesus, they said, Master, what should we do to do the works of God? Eh? Let me call it my final verse, all right? What should you do to do the works of the Lord? And Jesus said to them, Believe on whom that the Lord has sent. What is the works of the Lord? Believing on the sent one. If you want the works of the Lord, believe his sent messengers. They are not sent for themselves. They are sent for you. Believe on him whom he has sent. John 6, 28 and 29. This is the work of God. What is the work of God? Faith in the sent messenger is the work of God. Now, we live in a dangerous generation where they think we know God for ourselves. I can't follow a small boy. He's younger than me. <laughs> at the time he was born, I was already at the university. Oh no, BF is my age mate. Sir, you can call me BF. I don't have a problem with that. I am BF really. Like, like honestly speaking, I am. I'm BF. It's my name. It's my name. Back then, my sisters would say, um, ah, ah, we hear you prayed for somebody, one of our, the persons we know, says that you prayed for them, they got a miracle. <laughs> and they'll be saying that sarcastically. Sarcastically. And I'll say, I never did. Proximity does not mean connectivity. Look, Mr. Chair, let me use you. That you are a chairman does not mean you are the you are connected to the prophet. That you are Freddy and you work with me daily does not mean you are connected. Connection is known by the connected. You are the one who knows. <laughs> Let me tell you, I pray for everyone, even the unconnected. We can pour water in the in a in a in a bucket. The water the bucket is the one that knows that it's leaking. It's the one that knows. Now hear this. It does not take time for the anointing on the prophets to work. Always ask yourself why is it taking long? Why? My spiritual father prayed for me the other day. He just prayed. Last month, he just prayed. I, I, I was watching an online program with tears in my eyes in my study room. And I heard him preaching and he was talking about the ranks in the spirit with tears in my eyes. I said, am I, am I, am I a son of Oedepo and Komaya? If I am, so let it be proven. I can't, I can't be sharing their testimonies. I don't have mine. You know, you think I say testimonies. I don't have testimonies. Because theirs are too big. A man is using 30,000 for airtime. Well, to, to, to just follow souls. I don't have testimonies. I said, if I'm a son, then let it be proven. My father sent a message. He said, my son, you are blessed. 
my son, I say you are blessed. That you are blessed came differently that day than ever before. Let me tell you. There are moments I can be praying right now at the end of the service. All of you, you are blessed in Jesus' name. You say amen, but you know your heart is not here. Even when you are saying amen, you are scratching yourself at the back. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. I say you are blessed. Amen, sir. What did I say? You say I'm blessed. That you can repeat what I said does not mean your heart connected. Maybe you just have a good memory to remember what was said. Sir, the day you are blessed sounds differently in your heart. I close it here. When I met Pastor Komaya the first time, when he came here, the first statement he said was this. Any grace that will work for you will first disposition you. in this country and he's talking these things. And then he said, look at Elijah and Elisha. The first thing that Elisha had to do to follow was to lose everything he had. Any grace you have not lost anything to follow can never benefit you. We don't follow as convenient but as commanded. You don't follow on your terms. You follow on the terms of the one who is ahead. If I am driving from here, Tato is ahead of us. He's the one who knows where we are going. Why should I overtake him? I will drive. If I see him moving on the road to the left, I move to the left. Whether it's because his car is low and mine is up. He's driving maybe a, a, a sedan. I'm driving an SUV. But as I see him going, that's, maybe that's where we are going. Even though I could have gone straight. But because he's ahead of me. Don't follow on your terms. No, not naturally I don't like. Naturally, naturally I don't like reading. Naturally. Just, it's, it's just me now. Even at school, I never really read that much. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm where I am now. Naturally, <laughs> naturally I don't like reading. Naturally, naturally, naturally I don't wake up in the morning for prayer. In fact, I, I will pray. I will pray later. They will send the prayer points. I'll pray at 9. The prayer points we prayed at 5 a.m. When you pray them at 9, they are, they are irrelevant. They were for 5 to 6. Is it 5.30? 5.30 to 6.30. They were for 5.30 to 6.30. One time I said to one of my pastors in the branches, I said, ah, I've not seen you in the morning prayer. He said, Daddy, I prayed them at midnight. <laughs> because I prayed them at midnight so that by 5 I'll be sleeping. I would have prayed them. I said, eh, hey, why don't you have a pastor instructed midnight? The grace you have not lost anything to follow will not work for you. Master, we have lost all to follow you. Mark 10, verse 28 and 29. We have lost all to follow. What then shall we have? He said, everything you have lost hundredfold, you will have it back. Sir, we live in a generation that thinks availability of churches means option and choice. I've been born again since 1999. I can tell you this. I've only been a part of two churches. I got born again at Family of God. I got ministry trained at Winners Chapel and I'm here. There are many churches so that we can win many souls. Not so that you can jump from one to another. Because we rebuked you for fornicating. And we told you we can't officiate your wedding now. Let's, let's restore you from fornication. And then what do you do? You say, me, I want to get married. We are going. That you have all these things uh, behind you does not mean that you should be doing all this nonsense. Go! The, 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 the nonsense. Sir, I will never bend the culture of God to fit a people, no matter how much I love them. Talking about what? I, 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 now, I now do what? I, I now get you married, to, and then you are... You, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You may not like me. There, there are some people who left Royal Assembly. It's when they get to heaven. That's if they will arrive. It's when they get to heaven, they will realize that I was correct for them. Yeah. Yeah. 
There is only one correct pastor I know. Apart from my spiritual fathers, it is myself. Yeah. There is no demand of royal assembly that is to your, to your disadvantage. You can't follow the things that you do in this ministry and not be a success. In your career, anywhere, you can't. Sir, there are people who hire people, and when they are hiring, they ask, do you go to royal assembly? They say yes. They say, ah, if you are from BF, we take you now. Immediate, with immediate effect. I'm looking forward to a season where companies will be doing their stalls outside the church. After service, anybody who needs a job, just go there, enroll in whichever company you want, and they hire you. Because they say, if you come from Royal Assembly, you are the correct caliber. I have lost all to follow. How do I say I don't follow Kumaya anymore? Of all this money I've been using to go to Nigeria. You know how much seat I've given him. And then I leave him. You can only leave a place when you have not invested. It's not a risk investment. Risk investment. The kind that, ah, you, you need the kind of investment that if it doesn't work, you yourself, you call me fake. And there is a prayer I pray. Unless I am a fake man of God. 